Hello, today we will recap a crime drama movie, in which a security guard who was initially hailed as a hero for his actions that saved many lives, soon becomes the prime suspect in the bombing investigation because of corrupt officers in the FBI. Spoilers ahead, watch out and enjoy. The movie starts by introducing Richard Jewell, who is a young office worker at a law firm in the United States. On his very first day of work, Richard unintentionally overhears a conversation involving one of his supervisors named Bryant. From that point on, they get to know each other better. One day, Bryant was planning to ask Richard to replenish items on his desk such as tissue papers, stamps, and other supplies. However, before Bryant could mention it, Richard had already taken care of everything, even before the other employees arrived at the office. Bryant was really impressed by Richard's dedication and proactive approach. The following day, during their coffee break, Bryant happened to notice Richard playing a shooting game on an arcade machine. Curious, he approached Richard and asked why an adult like him was playing a game meant for kids. Richard explained that he had a childhood dream of joining the police or a law enforcement agency like the FBI. He believed that if he continued to improve his skills, he could make that dream a reality one day. One day, before leaving for the day, Richard visited Bryant's office. He shared the news that it would be his last day working there, because he had accepted a new job as a security guard at the university. As he prepared to leave, Richard presented Bryant with a farewell gift, his favorite snack. As a campus security guard, he remained an honest and disciplined worker. Unfortunately, his dedication to enforcing the campus rules caused some issues. The chancellor believed he was overly strict, which made the students uneasy. Certain students even complained about him entering dorm rooms, even though he only intended to confiscate prohibited alcohol. Despite his good intentions, Richard was let go from his position. Later that day, Richard encountered a friend who suggested he consider applying for a job as an officer at the American Olympics. In the following scene, at a news media agency office, we see a journalist named Kathy. She is frustrated as her boss continually pressures her to uncover gripping stories. A few days later, Richard successfully secures a new job as a security guard at the Olympics event. Before heading to work, he bids farewell to his mother, Bobby. During the concert, we see an FBI agent named Tom assigned to provide security for the event. Shortly thereafter, Kathy arrives and approaches him for a conversation. As it turns out, the two of them are already friends. Kathy's purpose for being there was to find an exciting topic to write about as news. However, she becomes disheartened as she fails to discover anything particularly captivating at the event. During the second day of the Olympics, Richard faced a challenge as he dealt with a stomach issue that made him late for work. Despite his mother's protests, he was determined to go to work. His exhaustive work schedule had taken a toll on his appearance, making him appear visibly fatigued. Concerned about his well-being, a colleague suggested that he switch shifts, but Richard declined and insisted on continuing his duties. Meanwhile, the 911 emergency service received a mysterious call from an unidentified person, who claimed that a bomb had been planted at the Olympic venue, and they had only half an hour. Richard while performing his security duties, stumbled upon a suspicious bag. He alerted fellow officers to investigate the bag. Despite facing skepticism from his colleagues, Richard remained steadfast in adhering to security protocols. He persisted in urging them to contact the bomb disposal unit. Determined, Richard made his way to the broadcasting room and urgently instructed everyone present to evacuate immediately, due to a suspicious bag discovered on the premises. Upon returning downstairs, Richard found that the bomb disposal unit had arrived. The bag was thoroughly examined and to Richard's validation, his suspicion had been right. Keeping their composure, Richard and the security team took charge, directing everyone to move away from the danger zone. However, amidst the panic, the bomb detonated, releasing shrapnel and nails that flew in all directions. The explosion triggered chaos within the venue. Several individuals were struck by the shrapnel, leading to fatalities and varying degrees of injuries. Hours later, Richard stood amidst the aftermath of the explosion. Suddenly, a reporter from a local TV station approached him and promptly initiated an interview. The reporter praised Richard as a hero for being the first to discover the bomb, and taking swift action to alert the authorities, resulting in the successful evacuation of numerous individuals. 
As time passed, Richard's reputation as a hero continued to grow. He received numerous invitations for interviews on various television shows, and offers even surfaced to write a biography about him. Meanwhile, at the FBI headquarters, Tom appeared stressed and burdened. He faced reprimands from his superiors due to his oversight. He had failed to prevent a major incident, causing damage to the FBI's reputation. Frustrated by the situation, his boss instructed him to identify the person responsible for the recent bombing, no matter what it took, to restore their reputation. In fact, they even considered the possibility that Richard might be involved. Tom and his colleagues decided to visit the university campus where Richard had previously worked. At home, before heading to work, Richard contacted Bryant, his former boss from the law firm where he once worked as an office boy. He sought Bryant's legal assistance, as he was unaware of the terms of the biography agreement, and other matters related to the offers he had received. Meanwhile, in a bar, Kathy coincidentally encountered Tom. She was aware that the FBI had likely zeroed in on a suspect in the recent bombing case. Curious, she asked Tom to reveal the identity of the person they were investigating. Tom was initially hesitant to disclose this information, as his team lacked concrete evidence to support their suspicions. However, under Kathy's playful prodding, he unintentionally revealed that the FBI had their sights set on Richard, the very person who was being hailed as a hero by everyone. The following day at the news office, Kathy wasted no time in instructing her colleagues to draft a major news piece about the bombing incident. The article highlighted the suspicion surrounding Richard, who had been hailed as a hero for his actions during the incident. Soon after, the news story circulated widely, becoming a prominent headline. Kathy received praise and applause from her fellow staff members for effectively boosting the ratings of their news channel. Meanwhile, at the FBI headquarters, Tom's superior was shocked upon discovering that their suspicions had been made public. Worried that their suspicions were incorrect and had further damaged their reputation, the boss directed Tom to interrogate Richard and take whatever actions necessary to incriminate him. The next day, Tom and his team arrived at Richard's mother's apartment to conduct the interrogation. Richard found this situation suspicious, since the FBI couldn't question or suspect someone without substantial evidence. Tom tried to justify their presence as a mere exercise. After Richard left, his mother turned on the TV and was shocked to see the news accusing her son of being responsible for the bombing. As the interrogation proceeded, Richard sensed something was off. He was instructed to narrate the entire sequence of events related to the bombing as if he was the one responsible. They even presented a statement letter and pressured him to sign it. He requested permission to contact his lawyer before proceeding further. But Bryant didn't answer his call. After a few hours, Bryant returned Richard's call as he had just arrived at the office. Richard explained his situation, and upon hearing the details, Bryant was shocked. He advised Richard to leave the interrogation process immediately. Bryant then instructed Richard to pass the phone to Tom. When Tom came on the line, Bryant assertively declared that the fabricated investigation was to end. Sadly, Richard had already signed the letter under the constant pressure he had been facing throughout the investigation. Later that evening, Bryant visited Richard at his place in order to determine the truth behind the FBI's accusations. The following day, upon returning to Richard's mother's apartment, Bryant was taken aback by the sight of firearms that Richard possessed. Richard clarified that he uses these guns for hunting in the woods. Unfortunately, the FBI arrived, launching a thorough search of the apartment for any connections to the bombing. Amid the investigation, one of the FBI agents even seized a Tupperware container belonging to Richard's mother. Richard's mother was displeased and promptly escorted the agent out of the apartment. They aimed to isolate Richard and convince him to cooperate. They requested Richard to repeat a particular sentence, all while being recorded. The sentence was an exact match for what the actual bomber had said when calling 911 prior to the explosion. Tom successfully obtained a recording of Richard uttering the same sentence. As time went by, news about Richard's alleged involvement continued to circulate through the media. Reporters camped out in front of their apartment day and night, causing immense stress for both him and his mother. After a while, Bryant accompanied Richard to visit a psychiatrist, who conducted a test using a lie detector machine. When the results were revealed, the test indicated that Richard was honest and not guilty, thereby demonstrating that all of the FBI's allegations were fake. 
Subsequently, Richard and Bryant headed to the news agency where Kathy was employed. Brian confronted her in front of the office staff, demanding that she promptly apologize for ruining the lives of Richard and his mother by publishing baseless news without any evidence. The following day, Kathy reflected on Brian's words and began investigating the facts by comparing the information she had received with the actual details of the crime scene. She calculated the distance between the location of the bomb-containing bag and the public telephone used by the perpetrator to call 911. Her suspicion grew as she realized that the distance between these two points was too long. When Kathy presented these facts to Tom, he dismissed them, still clinging to his belief in Richard's guilt. His main concern was restoring the FBI's reputation. However, in the following days, Bryant and Richard's mother held a press conference. During the conference, Bryant clearly stated that all the accusations against Richard were fake and without merit. Bryant presented the evidence of Richard's successful lie detector test, emphasizing that a qualified psychiatrist had confirmed Richard's honesty. Richard's mother also had her say, speaking passionately about the false accusations against her son. Throughout the past four weeks, they had lived in constant fear under the relentless scrutiny of numerous journalists and FBI agents. Overwhelmed with emotion, she tearfully pleaded for the president's intervention to address this unjust situation. In a quiet corner of the room, Kathy was visibly full of remorse for the actions that had caused so much harm to Richard's family. The day of the investigation had arrived. Before entering the room, Bryant advised Richard to speak only when responding to the FBI's questions. He encouraged Richard to leave any challenging questions to him. They both entered the interrogation room, and Richard was immediately subjected to questioning. Tom posed several questions, and Richard's responses were concise, mainly consisting of, no. As the interrogation reached its conclusion, Tom inquired whether Richard had collaborated with someone in the bombing incident, implying that he might have been involved, since he was the only security guard who left the crime scene unharmed despite being near the explosion. Upon hearing the question, a vivid flashback of the incident played out in Richard's mind. Instead of immediately responding to Tom's question, he emotionally turned the tables and inquired whether the FBI had uncovered any evidence to substantiate their accusations. Richard asked whether they had discovered his fingerprints or footprints on the public telephone, or if they had found any explosives in his apartment or his mother's Tupperware. Tom was left speechless. Richard continued, expressing his disappointment. He confessed that he had always believed the FBI was the pinnacle of law enforcement, only to realize that he was mistaken. He pointed out that this ordeal might discourage others from reporting suspicious activities in the future, due to the fear of being wrongfully accused. FBI had spent so much time and effort trying to frame him. They should have focused those resources on finding the true perpetrator. Richard's words hit them hard, leaving them speechless. He walked out of the office, leaving a strong impact. Three months later, during a restaurant meal, Tom and his colleagues approached Richard and Bryant. Tom handed them a letter and quickly departed. Bryant opened the letter in front of Richard, revealing that it stated all accusations against him were unsubstantiated. From that point on, Richard was officially cleared of all charges. Several years went by, and Richard had become a police officer. Brian visited him and shared the news that the FBI had apprehended the actual perpetrator responsible for the bombing. From that moment, Richard's name was cleared of all suspicion. Brian left him with a smile, proud of his friend's journey from an office boy to a true hero. So that's for today. Please subscribe to our channel if you like this video, which is the most important way to support us in making more great videos like this.